Hey guys, we are back today with a long-term review and comparison between the Wahoo Element Bolt V2 and the Garmin Edge 830. I've spent a lot of time with both of these computers now, so I wanted to give you my more in-depth thoughts and a little bit of comparison, what I like about each, what I dislike about uh, certain features and um, what I kind of wish the Garmin would adopt from the Wahoo and what the Wahoo would uh, adopt from the Garmin and we'll just jump into it. If you remember from my first video, kind of unboxing the Wahoo Element Bolt V2 here, this is one of my first times trying the new Wahoo products um, as far as the bike computers go. I actually use a number of other Wahoo products, um, for example, like the Kicker and some of their software programs, so I'm not unfamiliar with a lot of the Wahoo side of things. I've just never used any of their bike computers. Um, and so I really wanted to give it a try, especially compared to the Garmin Edge 830 right here that I've been using for um, quite a while, probably since launch. And one of the things that kind of intrigued me about the Wahoo is what some of my friends have said, you know, talked about how it's uh, a little bit uh, more user friendly or bug free. And so I just wanted to kind of go through some of that for myself and see if those, those, uh, recommendations had any credence to them, if I liked the, liked the Bolt uh, over the Garmin. And I'll be honest though, um, for the bug-free thing, I really haven't had a lot of problems with the Garmin since um, since maybe a few months after it was released and they fixed some of the initial launch bugs. Um, it's been pretty solid for me for the most part. And I actually have had a few bugs with the Wahoo that I was not expecting. Um, so I'll get into that in just a little bit. but. But size-wise, you know, um, kind of like I showed in my first video, pretty similar in size. Um, Garmin Edge 830 is a little bit bigger, a um, little bit bigger screen, a uh, little bit slimmer, but, uh, you know, head-on, Wahoo has kind of the aerodynamic shaping, at least that's what they call it. Um, the puck is hidden under the mount, so it kind of sits flush a little bit better. The Garmin is obviously protrudes. Um, but you can add a charge pack to it, something I've never done um, or had the need to do. The battery life has been fantastic for both of these, um, but you can add a charge pack there and it can last a lot longer. So, uh oh, I'm already pressing buttons. Um, so one of the things that I like right away about the Garmin is the ability here to have different types of pages set up for different ride types. So in this case, I have like, for example, a gravel ride type. And so maybe I have some data screens paired back. I only want to see my distance, heart rate, speed, timer, maybe an elevation profile. But then let's say, you know what, let's, um, let's go on a road ride. So I can click over to the road ride. And now I have a whole different set of pages set up and data screens. And they kind of show some different metrics that I might want to see while I'm riding on the road. On the other hand, the Wahoo doesn't really have that ability. So there is no way to set kind of different ride profiles. You can still obviously, you know, toggle through the pages, but um, but there's no specific way to set up like a road profile or a gravel profile. Um, again, not the end of the world, right? You can set up each page differently but I just like being able to have kind of a whole separate setup on the Garmin for stuff like that. Um, so just another thing to keep in mind there. And I do like on that Wahoo how the colors on the screen just seem to pop a little bit more. Um, you can kind of see that here with the blue start button versus like the blue on the road profile here on the Garmin. So the colors pop just a little bit better and the screen resolution it's hard, hard to say. I'd probably give the edge to the Wahoo um, for being able to see it a little bit better. And the other thing here is you'll see that the Wahoo has kind of like a matte anti-reflective screen. Um, so the Garmin actually has a glossy screen, if you can see around the edges. And I've actually added a screen protector to make it a little bit more anti-reflective. Um, so that's something that I like that the Wahoo has just straight out of the box. Um, in the bright direct sunlight, I was getting kind of a glare off the screen that was hard to read in certain instances. So I like that that about the Wahoo. Um, 
the other thing that I really like about the Wahoo is the way, so I don't have a heart rate monitor connected right now, but the way it uses color to indicate like heart rate zone or power zone. So it's really easy when I'm just riding along to glance down and see approximately how hard I'm working. Um, whereas if we jump into the road version here on Garmin, it doesn't, it doesn't do that. So even though Garmin has a color screen, it doesn't utilize that for any of your metrics um, or your power numbers in this example or heart rate. So on the Wahoo, if I'm in my aerobic zone and I'm just riding along, then it'll show you know my heart rate in a green zone. So I just look down and I know, okay, you know, no need to worry, everything's good. Um, on Garmin, it doesn't do that. I have to look down and I actually have to see what number I'm doing. It's just, uh, it's more glanceable on the Wahoo. And that's something I really wish that Garmin would adopt is that kind of using that color for glancing is super helpful. Uh, the other thing that I really like is the way that it combines basically two pieces of information into one. So for example, right, I have heart rate zone here or I have heart rate here. But with the way that the Wahoo uses the colors is it both shows me my actual heart rate number, but also I know my zone based on the color. So it just basically eliminates kind of a redundant data field in that case. So it really makes it easy if you want to try to pace a PR or, you know, set a personal best, then, then having that kind of glanceable information, really helpful. Um, when it comes to setting up data fields, this is kind of the big area where Wahoo has the edge, I would say, is being able to set up all these different pages, you know, where you just toggle through them. Um, right from your smartphone. So I can just do that all on my phone that has a better touch screen, better responsiveness, better um, UI, basically just a lot more freedom. And so any changes I make on my smartphone are reflected in real time on my Wahoo Element Bolt. So that's really nice. Um, but on the flip side, you know, the Garmin does have a touch screen. So in some instances, that makes it really easy to manage different things just right on the device, right? So I can, you know, I can come into my sensors, I can adjust them, I can edit them. Um, whereas on the Wahoo, so if I'm not using my phone, trying to go through and do this with just the buttons, for example, um, much, I wouldn't say much more difficult, but definitely more challenging. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Initial setup, better, easier with the Wahoo, but if you don't want to take out your phone to make changes, um, then I'd say it's actually easier to make changes on the Garmin. So if I'm out on the road, I don't want to dig my phone out of my pocket and go through my settings. I can just quickly tap in and make those changes or, you know, quickly access my sensors, make those changes. Um, so difference there, initial setup easier out on the ride, easier for those changes. So keep that in mind, um, depends on what you value most. Um, if you're switching between multiple devices, it's easy to save settings for both of these from their respective apps. So next I wanna talk a little bit more about um, adding a sensor. Um, that's probably one of the main things you'll, you'll add, heart rate monitor, power meter, Vario radar. I do wanna call out that the Wahoo supports the Vario radar, which is really awesome. Um, obviously the Garmin does as it's a Garmin product. So if you wanna add a sensor, right, you click on the side button here, you come down, you add a sensor um, on the Wahoo. On the Garmin, similar idea, right? You slide down, you click sensor, add sensor. You can search by type um, or you can search all. On the Wahoo, it just gives you uh, an option to add sensor. It doesn't let you search by what type of sensor. Um, so minor things there. But I do want to point out here that Wahoo does something interesting that I, I don't quite understand. Um, so when you're adding a sensor to the Wahoo, you add a sensor, but it doesn't tell you if it's adding an Ant Plus version of the sensor or the Bluetooth connection to the sensor. Um, it just adds the sensor and then it automatically selects what it thinks is the strongest connection. So on the surface, that sounds great. You're getting the strongest connection, 
But for example, here on the Garmin, right, it'll give me the option to add either the Ant Plus or the Bluetooth or both. So in some instances, right, you can see here I have like the Garmin heart rate monitor Bluetooth connection and I have the Bluetooth actually turned off, um, but then I have the Garmin heart rate monitor Ant Plus connection turned on. So this is a really minor thing, but for battery life, Ant Plus is a little bit more friendly so I like on the Garmin being able to select which sensor I'm connecting to. So maybe the Ant Plus signal is a little bit weaker, but I know the battery life is going to be a little bit better. So I can select specifically to connect to the Ant Plus sensor. Whereas on the Wahoo, that's not an option. It just connects to the sensor and then it automatically picks which one it thinks is the best. So again, not something that's really going to affect your actual writing experience. But uh, just something I thought was interesting that I wanted to call out between the two that I really hadn't heard or seen anybody else talk about before. So next, if we kind of uh, move on that similar train of thought to battery life, um, both of these are going to get you through any ride you're going to do unless you're doing some sort of like bike packing or excursion type of ride. Um, battery life is really good on both. The Garmin Edge is a little bit better. I believe the Bolt claims about 15 hours of battery life and the Garmin Edge claims about 20 hours. And I've done super long rides, like 10 hours, and the Edge still has, you know, probably 40% of the battery um, left when I'm done, which is pretty remarkable considering it's over three years old now, basically. Um, the Bolt, drains a little bit faster. Um, so if I do like a, a six hour ride, then it's probably down to about 40%. So again, pretty in line with what they're claiming for the manufacturers. Um, and that's with everything connected. So that's like all of my sensors connected, following a navigation and having it connected to my phone so I can see any text messages that pop up. So realistically, battery life isn't an issue anymore. They're both really good when it comes to that. So talking a little bit more about those like courses and navigation. So Garmin gives you kind of the navigation button here where you can go into courses and you can see all of your saved courses and then follow a course um, right from your head unit. So this is super helpful if I basically know most of the way I want to go. So for example, this, this morning I did a, a, route, a route that I have ridden pretty frequently and, but I was going to meet some friends, so I wanted to pull up the navigation to know when the climbs were going to come and uh, how long each climb was and what the gradient was. So I just, while I'm writing, I click navigation, go to courses, save courses, and I pick one. Um, on the Wahoo, you can't do that. Um, you have to preload the course. So even though it has a fully featured GPS, uh, you can't just go in and pick any route that's saved to your device because you have to access that from your phone. Um, so I don't love that about the Wahoo. Uh, it's just once you're writing and you need to access navigation, which is one of the key features that they highlight on the Wahoo, wh why can you not access it from the device? Um, you know, how many people have started a ride and then been like, oh, I meant to pull up the course? You're on a group ride, I'm in to pull up the course, so I know which turns are coming up. Um, you can't do that without pulling out your phone on the Wahoo, but on the Garmin, as long as you've saved it from Garmin Express, saved it from Strava, whatever, um, whatever program you use, then it'll be right there in your navigation and you can start it at any time. So another example here where that's kind of frustrating is um, my friend and I were doing a gravel ride the other day. So I loaded the course ahead of time with the with the Wahoo, but I didn't start at exactly the spot that the course was said I was starting. So as I was riding along, the Wahoo kept trying to get me to make a U-turn to start the route exactly from the starting spot on, on the route. So even though we were following the course perfectly and it saw that we were following the course perfectly, it kept trying to get me to turn around instead of realizing that we were already on the course. On the other hand, I've started a Garmin course mid-ride, and then it realizes like, hey, we're on the course. We don't need to go back to the very starting spot. Let's just start you from where you are on the course. Um, so in that perspective, huge, 
huge usability difference and I, the Garmin really wins out. Another thing to talk about is the Climb Pro feature on the Garmin Edge 830, which is called the new Summit climbing feature on the Bolt. Um, that was initially my biggest hesitation. I really didn't want to switch from the Garmin to the Wahoo because of the Climb Pro feature that the Garmin had. Uh, the good news is that um, now that Wahoo has added that feature, it really helps it compete uh, against that main feature. Um, although I will say the Summit Climbing feature is still new, um, maybe just a few months old at this point. And so I expect that it'll continue to be refined over the next year, two years, whereas the Garmin feature has been out for a couple years now. And they've done a lot of those under the hood refinements to make it a little bit better. Overall, the Climb Pro still edges out the new Summit feature on the Wahoo. Just the way it breaks down the climbs a little bit better is, in my opinion, more useful. Um, shows you the gradient a little bit better, shows you kind of which portion of the climb you're on. Um, the Wahoo still does a great job and it's a huge improvement over the old version. Something else to call out is in order for those features to work for both of these, you do need to have a route loaded. Um, it's not like the Hammerhead where it automatically will detect climbs without a route loaded. So you still need to, to load a route. Um, but on the Wahoo, it has to be a route loaded, but on Garmin, maybe it's not a route I've saved, but if I just like navigate and I go to uh, any point of interest as I'm riding, then it will automatically load the climbs for the route that it pulls up on its own. So a little bit more of an advantage there to that. Um, one area though that the bolt does beat out the edge is when it comes to loading region maps and base maps. So for 99% of people, this isn't gonna be a problem, but say you're going to a different state or you're going out of country and you're going on a cycling trip, whatever it may be, the Wahoo makes it really easy. Right from the smartphone app, you can go in and you can add delete or update maps for different regions. Um, so if I'm going to Europe, let's say, then I can go in, I can add the Europe specific maps. So when I get there, it will know all of the navigation, bike paths, everything that I need for riding in Europe. You can do the same thing on the Garmin, but you have to plug it into a computer. So it makes it a little bit more difficult. Um, you have to plug it into a computer to be able to manage those maps. Um, but the Wahoo, you can do right from your phone really easily. And it's uh, not something you touch often, but when you do need to do it, the Wahoo definitely wins out. Okay, so I, I alluded to this earlier, the last big talking points, um, it's gonna be bugs. So historically, and I'm sure all of you have heard it, they say, if you want a product that just works, get the Wahoo. Um, if you wanna be a beta tester, get the Garmin. Uh, so, some truth to that, but also surprisingly, it's just not really the case anymore. So like I mentioned, when I first got the Garmin, there were some bugs that needed to be fixed. And a few months after release, the majority of the major problems were fixed. So in that sense, yeah, that's true. Uh, now on the other hand, the Wahoo V2 has been out for about a year now, and I was still having some issues with sensors connecting. Um, so I'd start a ride and a sensor wouldn't connect for maybe three or four minutes and there was no way to force pair the sensor. Um, whereas with the Garmin they just connect right away or you can go into sensors and just force pair the sensor. Um, so I was having some issues with that. It's since been mostly fixed. Um, but I'll say that the the old adage of Wahoo just works isn't always the case now. Um, there are definitely some more bugs with the Wahoo than there used to be. Um, if you're buying a brand new Gar Garmin product, then it still holds true. There are gonna be bugs that you're just gonna have to wait until they're fixed. So keep that in mind. Um, neither of them are perfect. The majority of the time they work just how they're supposed to. So the last feature that um, that I wanted to call out is the zoom feature. I love being able to zoom in and out um, on these metrics. You don't do it often, um, but when you do, super helpful. On the Garmin, there's no way to do that. It's just, 
you can swipe between pages, which is good. Um, you can essentially accomplish the same thing, but I love the zoom. And like I talked about at the beginning of the video, I love the colors and I wish Garmin would adopt that. Um, for Wahoo, I wish they would adopt the ease of use for sensor pairing that the Garmin has and the navigation. The navigation is the biggest point where the Garmin is just the better cycling computer. Um, for navigation, oh, personalization, again, the Garmin's just a little bit better. You can set specific power zones. Um, Wahoo kind of tries to figure it out for you automatically. And you can adjust it to some degree, um, but the Garmin is definitely a little bit easier to personalize. So that's the big differences. That's kind of my long-term opinion and long-winded opinion of the two. Um, just in full transparency, I do prefer the Garmin still over the Wahoo. I'm really glad I've been able to try the Wahoo and use it. Um, and I actually do still use both of these computers. I use the Garmin pretty much anytime I'm on the road and I have kind of now moved the Wahoo to more of like the gravel computer um, so I can have it set up for all my gravel biking and anything off-road. So still use them both, still like them both. They both work really well. You'll be happy with either one. But my personal preference is just that the Garmin is just a little bit better product still. So take it for what it's worth. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try to get back to you. Buy whichever computer you like most because at the end of the day, that's the one that'll make you the happiest. That's the one you'll like using. Um, you won't regret not purchasing either one of these. They're both great computers. They both integrate with your DI2 or your Axis. Um, again, they're both great. Buy which one you like. Um, my personal preference is just that the Garmin Edge 830 is a little bit better. Thanks for watching, guys, and stay tuned for other videos. Make sure you, uh, you like or subscribe, but you don't have to. Thanks, guys. Bye.